from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage. Day three of three days of coverage. VMworld 2018 here in Las Vegas. Uh, Cube wall-to-wall -wall coverage, 94 interviews, two sets, our ninth year covering VMworld. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Stu Miniman on this segment. Our next guest is Milan Tisai, who's the Vice President and General Manager of Cloud Services at VMware, formerly driving the NSX business, been there for multiple years, eight years. Great to see you, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Pleasure to be here. So you've seen the evolution, you've been there, you've been in the boat. NSX on a good path, doing really well, cloud services, very clear visibility on what strategy is. Mm -hmm. Private and public, hybrid, multi-cloud, validated by uh, the leader, AWS, and Andy Jassy, again for the second year. So, pretty clear visibility, at least, on what the landscape looks like. Mm -hmm. Multiple clouds, software driving all the value. What's the cloud services piece that you're running now? Take a minute to explain what the landscape looks like, what's your charter, what are you trying to do, and what's happening with news and announcements? Sure. So, um about two years back, we started on this journey uh, around cloud services. And the premise was that increasingly, there are two trends that are taking place, which is SaaS delivered experiences for on-prem. So how can we deliver SaaS experiences on-prem, uh, as well as the partnership with uh, you know, AWS for VMware Cloud on AWS. So the two things started coming together, both in terms of a product opportunity, which is VMware Cloud on AWS, but overall delivering our capabilities as SaaS, both hybrid as well as in the public cloud. So cloud services is a portfolio that delivers VMware services from management to security to operations as SaaS services to the private cloud, Mm -hmm. as well as to the public cloud. Tom Korn, the Senior Vice President General of Security Products, was just on theCUBE today as well, before you came on. He said, I asked him for a prediction, and I'll ask you at the end too, for a 2019 prediction. But he said, he said, I'd see the conversation starting to be security as a service someday. And you know, it's kind of like connecting the dots a bit, but that proves the point. It's a SaaS business model. Mm -hmm. The services need to be consumable and scalable. This is a key design criteria and a product guide, guiding principle, right, for you guys? Yes. Yeah, so Increasingly, the, you know, SaaS makes it easy. The, the value benefits on that is I don't need to operate, it just works, and I can get the value out of what we are delivering. And that's really what's driving the adoption of SaaS. It's easy to use, it gets you to outcomes quicker, and I don't need to worry about the management elements of that. And so, whether it's you take our uh, updates to cloud management, we announced uh, cloud assembly, service broker, and code stream, all delivered as SaaS to our hybrid infrastructure as well as if you want to deploy workloads in AWS or Azure, same thing. App Defense, Tom's product, is delivered as a SaaS service. VMC on AWS is a managed SaaS service. So you're seeing that come together as VMware. The idea is, can we bring that experience on-prem as well as in the hybrid cloud? Yeah. Millen, it's a really interesting topic because often what gets lost when we're talking about multi-cloud is what really matters is applications and, and the data that sits on top of it. Maybe walk through a little bit, uh, you know, uh, my on-premises versus my SASified stuff versus the, the cloud native and PKS. How much of the business is driven from all of these pieces? So, uh, the majority of uh, our uh, business right now is on-premise software where customers are building and operating the infrastructure with our software. Now, the first uh, you know, evolution into SaaS was actually with our service providers who were using the subscription model to deliver VMware as a service to their end customers. And then the second iteration of that is VMware Cloud on AWS, uh, which is growing really well, uh, both in terms of adoption uh, as well as number of customers. Uh, and now, you're seeing the next evolution. So I would say from a, a number standpoint, uh, you know, it's low, but in terms of number of customers adopting it, that number is high. So whether it's cloud operations with Wavefront, or the whole automation suite that was launched, App Defense, we're starting to see the shift to SaaS, but I would say the majority of our customers are on on-prem software with VMware Cloud Foundation, uh, which includes NSX, and our vRealize management portfolio, uh, which has been driving the majority of revenue. 
I got to ask you about NSX uh, relative to the cloud services because one of the things we've been pontificating and analyzing is how multi-cloud is really going to work. Mm -hmm. And we always try to compare and contrast to networking because Stu and I love networking and storage and, and some of the infrastructure stuff. But you know, if you go back into the, you know, the, the evolution of TCP IP and what that did for the industry, and Gelsinger loves to talk about this too, is NSX the, the kind of enabler that TCP IP was? TCP and then you had IP create a lot of value in inter internetworking. What does the customer challenge look like when you're doing multi-cloud? It's not trivial, it's hard to do. Is there an interoperability framework and is it NSX? What could that be? Great question. I think you know, as we go from private to public to the edge, the virtual cloud network is what connects it all together. Uh, and so definitely from a, within the data center, with now the VeloCloud acquisition, the WAN, and then layering it with analytics and observability with VDLI's network inside, the portfolio of NSX allows you to connect these disparate data islands and operate very seamlessly in this hybrid cloud world. Now the same construct applies when you go native public cloud, where you can connect into an AWS or an Azure, and that's where again, the Velo Cloud uh, you know, acquisition alongside how NSX is extending its security policy into AWS and Azure, so that you can get the same security posture on-prem at the edge, in VMC on AWS with our VCPP providers, as well as in native AWS and native Azure. So definitely NSX is that connective tissue, which create, you know, that's why we call it the virtual cloud network, connects the hybrid cloud to the multi-cloud. Yeah. Seamlessly. Seamlessly. Yeah, Mill, one of the feedbacks I get from users is, you know, multi-cloud is challenging. There's that big elephant, how do I get my arms around all the pieces, where my data live? Maybe give us the update there, and I, I, I did have a chat with Joe Kinsella on theCUBE yesterday, so if Cloud Health Technologies fits into that overall cloud management piece, I'm sure it does, and you can give a little bit of guidance. Uh, I'd like to understand how that fits. Yeah, so, you know, uh, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, SaaS and delivering VMware services as SaaS to vSphere customers. But there is this other world where people are going native AWS, native Azure, native GCP. And the interesting thing I tell folks is, it's very easy to consume cloud, but as you start consuming it, you start dealing with tens of thousands of objects across multiple projects, hundreds of projects, across thousands of users. And when you start looking at the problem statement, same things, visibility, lack of visibility, resource management, you tend to over-provision two in the cloud, right? But now you're paying by the drip, so there's a definite impact to the bottom line. End-to-end -end observability, and then configuration compliance. Think about this. You're operating at 10x in terms of changes. The chances of making a configuration mistake, like leaving an S3 bucket open, are quite high. And we've seen so, examples of that too. Exactly, many a CIO have been fired because of that issue. So what we've been seeing with our customers is, this has become a data problem, right? And so the acquisition of Cloud Health allows us to essentially provide a platform that has that data and then deliver to our customers in the native cloud visibility, I say cost management, so in using reserved instances over on demand, resource management, hey, you are over-provisioned on your elastic block storage we can reduce you know, your, you know, the storage capacity and save money. I can optimize RDS better. SQL right sizing in Azure. So resource management becomes very interesting. Returns on a typical customer with Cloud Health are upwards of 60%. When you take that into consideration with real-time security configuration, Secure State was just announced in beta uh, this week. So real-time security configuration, when that mistake happens, with an S3 bucket being open, sub 10 seconds, we will notify the user that there's a misconfiguration in the cloud. Please go fix it. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm, I'm curious, what, one of the other challenges is when I have, you know, especially using lots of different SaaS providers, public cloud, private cloud, you know, data protection uh, you know, is, is, is a big challenge there. Uh, I know VMware has a lot of ecosystem partners, one of the hottest things over the last couple mm -hmm. of years. Is that primarily an ecosystem play? Is, you know, where, how does VMware position there? Yeah, so in the uh, hybrid cloud world, like you said, uh, you know, we have a very strong ecosystem, multiple vendors here uh, exhibiting. Um, there will be some default elements that we bring into vSAN to help kind of the basics of data, you know, backup and management. Uh, but we will, you know, definitely continue to partner with our ecosystem when it comes to an aggregate stack of data management. Uh, but there will be pockets of just simple, you know, backup capabilities that you'll start seeing uh, in uh, vSAN. I think we announced the beta uh, of that uh, this week. Talk about your organization, you're the general manager. Do you have a product loss, profit loss responsibility? So you have, do you have revenue? Yes. So what's, talk about the, the team, how you guys are set up, how big is the team, what's the focus? Yeah, so we, our team, uh, you know, so there's two elements to my team. One is, uh, you know, my team drives cloud services across VMware, so there are folks developing services themselves. The size of the team is now 70 strong across, you know, product, marketing, uh, and engineering. Uh, and then I also work with my counterparts like Mark Lohmeyer, Ajay Singh, who are building services on our common flat platform, right? And so in aggregate, to the, uh, to the customer, they come to cloud.vmware.com, we feder they federate their enterprise identity, they log in, they see our the, a catalog, it's like a Netflix-like catalog, you can subscribe to it, you get a common experience in terms of billing, and essentially start using the services. So it's not only what my team builds, but in aggregate what VMware is building and offering uh, to our end users. And what go-to-market do you have, have, which products are you doing the go-to-market for? So uh, it's all of our SaaS-based cloud services. We collectively uh, drive the go-to-market for that uh, uh, as a team, uh, working with our corporate marketing team. So awesome. that would be yeah. a combination of uh, you know, VMware Cloud on AWS, App Defense, now Secure State, Wavefront, yeah. and very soon Cloud Health. Yeah, a lot of pressure. The, the SaaS <laughs> products there, do they live in like the AWS Marketplace, IBM, you know, Docker, what, what kind of, where, where can they get, to get all of them? Yeah. So uh, today you go to cloud.vmware.com and subscribe to them. Certain offers are starting to uh, get into like AWS Marketplace, so Cloud Health is actually in the AWS Marketplace. Sure, sure and we're looking at Wavefront, uh, which is a hidden jewel in our portfolio, uh, is also, we are thinking about how we can get it into the respective marketplaces of Azure, GCP, and others. But today, if you want to access any of these services, you simply go uh, and trial it uh, by just going to our website and, and starting a trial. So they're giving you all the new stuff, make it happen, AWS, VMware, and AWS, vice versa. RDS on-premises, you doing that as well? Yes, so, um, you know, RDS uh, on uh, vSphere, I, I mean, it's been, you know, since the announce, we've had phenomenal conversations over here. Yeah. Um, and it's I, exciting, I think people don't understand how big oh, this is. John, I, I had a phenomenal conversation with Yen being in Christos from the storage and availability business use, really broke down how all of that worked in detail. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the customer interest is high. Uh, someone asked me, you know, why RDS? And, uh, and they said it's such a hard problem, and my, my, that was my point exactly. There is such a pain when it comes to managing databases, and just like everything else, we started off the conversation, customers want to manage service. Yeah. They don't want to deal with the intricacies of managing databases. They just want the outcomes from how yeah. they access databases. And so, Amazon has solved it very elegantly with RDS. It's one of their most popular services. Why not bring it on-prem? And so that's been a great engineering partnership we are driving with them, and I'm really excited to bring it to market yeah. uh, shortly. Well, we're looking forward to keeping in touch. We want to actually follow up with you on that. It's a story we're going to be following, certainly developing. It's big news, we love it. Thanks for coming on and spending the time. I got to get you to put a prediction out there for 2019. What do you see happening in 2019 that we're going to be talking about next year at VMworld? Personal prediction, could be a VMware prediction. You've seen a lot of what's going on with NSX, you see what's going on in the big picture. Holistically, what, what, what is the prediction for 2019? It, it might be a boring prediction, but uh, you know, I, I, I fundamentally believe this, this notion of hybrid being bi-directional in nature, I, I think we'll see more of that. Uh, you know, you, the, even Google announced GKE on vSphere as an example, so I think you'll see more of that come through, and it won't be a one-way destination conversation that we keep having. Um, and you will see VMware, uh, you know, truly be a multi-cloud company. It won't matter if you're deploying an application in the native cloud or on a vSphere-based cloud. We will help the customer where they land the application. 
My firm belief is next year when we are here, we'll be talking about stories about how we are helping scale customers in Azure and AWS and GCP on one end, and about how we've brought cloud on-prem yeah. uh, with services like RDS. Final question, I want to put you in the spot. What do you think is the biggest disruptive enabler for the next 10 years in this bi-directional multi-cloud world? Can you point to one thing that says that's going to be the disruptive enabler for the next 10 to 20 years? Is there, is there something out there you can point to? Trend, uh, technology, um, standard? So, so the way I think about the world is a, is, is a little bit differently in terms of I, I truly believe that we are getting inundated by data I'm not talking about the data that you store in terms of running your business, but in terms of the metadata that you run your operations and your infrastructure with. And I believe that uh, the layer that will control that, that portion, the metadata of infrastructure and applications, we have not even begun to understand where that goes. And then you apply AI and ML uh, techniques yeah. to that, the, the idea of, uh, you know, we have, you, I'll throw a term around here, is, self-driving data centers and uh, self-optimizing applications. Uh, it, it, I get really excited, but it all begins with that data layer. Uh, and we are starting to put the beginning signs with cloud health, our private cloud assets, uh, to, to start that process. I'm really excited about how AIML meets that data layer yeah. to achieve those outcomes. It automates IT operations, sounds like. Automation is coming. Lola, thanks for coming on. Lola Desai is the Vice President General Manager of VMware's Cloud Services, the hottest area, it's emerging, it's got a lot of attention, we'll be following it, of course, on SiliconANGLE and Wikibon and theCUBE. We're day three coverage here in the broadcast booth in Las Vegas in the VM Village. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Stay with us for more after this short break. <laughs>